Compute the partial fraction's decomposition for the function r of x, who is 4x squared minus 15x plus 26 over x plus 1 times x minus 2 quantity squared. The first thing to note is that, conveniently for us, the denominator has already been factored. So that's one less thing we have to worry about. So if we take 4x squared minus 15x plus 26 divided by x plus 1 times x minus 2 quantity squared, we can split this up into three terms in the partial fractions. A term over x plus 1, a term over x minus 2, and then a term over x minus 2 quantity squared to take up for, or make up for the repeated root. Now we just have to work out the coefficients a, b, and c that would make this true. To get one step closer, let's stick the right-hand side back on a common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 2 quantity squared. The first term to get on the common denominator will require an x minus 2 squared. It already has the x plus 1, so it contributes a times x minus 2 quantity squared. The second term will require an x plus 1 and an additional x minus 2, so it's going to contribute a b times x plus 1 times x minus 2. The third term, which already has an x minus 2 squared, only needs the x plus 1, and so it will contribute a c times x plus 1. And since these terms now have the same denominator, we can add them up and obtain this expression here. If we set it equal to the original rational function of 4x squared minus 15x over 20 plus 26 over x plus 1 x minus 2 squared, then since the denominators match the functions are equal, we can set their numerators equal to each other and simply focus on that equation. So let's do that now. To solve this equation, we can pick different x values. For example, if we pick x equals 1, we'll come up with the equation 4 plus 15 plus 26 is equal to a times uh, I guess that'd be minus 1, sorry, squared, or minus 3 squared, um, plus a 0 term, plus another 0 term. This is a cleverly picked value. So if we simplify this, we get 45 is equal to 9a, and that means that a is equal to 5. So we found the first term. We'll replace this a by 5. Next, let's pick another x value, x equals 2. If we plug this into the equation, we'll have 16 minus 30 plus 26, is equal to, well, a 0, the first term will cancel, plus a 0, the second term will cancel, plus a c times 2 plus 1, or c times 3. That gives us the equation 12 is equal to 3c, so c is equal to 4. And now we can replace the c up top by a 4. So we've selected two values and got two equations and two unknowns, a third x value. In this case, x equals 0 is just sort of a random choice. It will give us the equation 26 is equal to a times minus 2 squared plus b times 1 times minus 2 plus c times 1. Any value would work, but I like to pick small numbers. This gives us 26 is equal to 4a minus 2b plus c. Using the fact that we know a and c, this becomes 26 is equal to 20 minus 2b plus 4. Solving this, we're going to get the equation uh, 2 is equal to negative 2b, and so b is equal to minus 1. If we replace that in the top, we have a minus 1 here, and now we have our partial fractions. This can be simplified or expressed also as 5 uh, over x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 2 plus 4 over x minus 2 quantity squared. And that's our partial fractions decomposition. We can also write it as 5 times 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 2 plus 4 times 1 minus uh, 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared. Either one of these is acceptable, although we prefer the latter one for calculus.